Why hello there! Today we'll be starting off with this week's Starship news, then we'll go over some clandestine Starlink reveals, see what's to come on the launch manifest, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Scrubs and delays is the theme for this week's episode. We like to think of them as prolonged moments of anticipation and excitement. SpaceX was expected to perform a fuel pump test and static fire of SM5 earlier this week after previous delays, but pushed those tests to yesterday and then again to today. The fuel pump test should be knocked out by the end of the day and the static fire possibly by the end of the weekend. The great news is, is that we are expecting only a limited number of static fires this time around possibly even one before the coming 150 meter hop. So prepare yourselves. A local viewing area along Highway 4 has been erected where local viewers can get a nice view of the hovering gas can magic show. Wanna see a magic trick? But while we wait for that day to come, movement is still going on in other parts of the site. And the site itself is still rapidly expanding. For the first time in almost a year, a nose cone has been fully stacked. Although which serial number will be the one to receive it is still a mystery. Chances are the Starship to have it will be the first one to reach some significant altitudeage, and the super heavy pad and high bay are also making progress. But there is a Starship that is going in the complete opposite direction. Mark II in Cocoa, Florida is finally being disassembled. For those of you not aware of its existence, early last year SpaceX pitted two teams against each other for a race to build a Starship vehicle, one in Boca and one in Cocoa. But after the Mark 1 exploded in Boca during cryo testing in November, SpaceX stopped operating at the Florida site. Elon hasn't been saying much on Twitter lately concerning Starship stuff. He and several other high profile tweeters like Bill Gates were hacked the other day. So that probably doesn't help. I guess 12345 isn't much of a secure password after all. My password is an impenetrable fortress. But Elon did tweet some good stuff concerning Starlink, you know, before those tweets were ultimately deleted by Twitter in response to Hackgate. We'll start at the beginning. Those of you who signed up at Starlink.com to receive Starlink updates concerning your area should have gotten an invitation via email to update your exact address. Also in that email was some info on the private and public betas to come. They are expected to begin this summer. Some intelligent minds found some hidden gems in the website's public source code, which included the first official SpaceX photos of the UFO on a stick Starlink antennas, as well as the terms of service and privacy policies. The beta is an opportunity to be an early user of the SpaceX's satellite internet system, says the clandestine website. The purpose is to gather feedback that will help us make decisions on how best to implement the system for Starlink's official launch. Those who wish to participate in the upcoming beta test must live in the northern United States and lower Canada, with those living in rural and or remote communities in the Washington state area. But these locations won't guarantee access. Accepted users will be FedEx a pre-assembled Starlink kit with dish, router, power supply, and mount depending on dwelling type. Elon tweeted that Starlink terminals have motors to self-orient for optimal view angle. No need to be an expert installer, just plug in and give it a clear view of the sky. The fee to participate is $1 a month with a $3 initial charge followed by $2 per month. These charges are not a fee, but allow for the testing of our ordering and billing systems. Once Starlink goes live to the public, people can order online at Starlink.com. And while we're on the topic of Starlink, let's move on to the second SpaceX scrub as of late. Starlink's 10th mission was slated to lift off last week, but was delayed to allow for more time for checkouts. That's not exactly new news, but what is new news is that there is still no news to mention. Still, no date has been announced. SpaceX also denied the launch of our third scrub for today's episode, Anasys 2. It was supposed to be a go on Monday, but they wanted to take a closer look at the second stage and swap hardware if needed. That mission, however, has since been given a date of July 19th. So thank the maker, I have a fever, and the only cure is more Falcon 9. In Farron catching ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief were spotted heading out to sea this morning by local rocket photographer, Trevor. And it appears they left netless, so they might be fishing boats again for this one. The booster for this mission is notable in that it previously launched Bob and Doug to the space station. The next booster to launch American astronauts and one Japanese astronaut on Crew-1 just arrived at the Cape. It is expected to lift off by September. Elon did say that the reason for this abrupt slow in their launch cadence is due to their paranoia. Perhaps Rocket Lab's recent anomaly gave them a frightful reminder of how rebellious rockets could be. Or maybe they have reason to believe their sniper has returned to the grassy knoll or rooftop. No matter what the reason for their paranoid demeanor really is, with millions of dollars on the line, it quite literally pays to succeed. So it's understandable. 
And the last little bit of SpaceX news I have for you today, and this is just in, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine tweeted that they are targeting August 1st for the departure of SpaceX's Dragon Endeavor spacecraft, also known as Demo-2, from the space station to bring Bob and Doug back home from their historic mission. Splashdown is targeted for the next day, August 2nd. Weather will drive the actual date. Stay tuned. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, the United States Space Force and National Reconnaissance Office launched four remote sensing payloads out of Wallops Island, Virginia, and into orbit on a Northrop Grumman Minotaur IV rocket for the NRO-129 mission. Why did I make that a long run on sentence? This particular rocket is a four-stage solid rocket, no liquid propellant need apply, put together out of decommissioned Peacekeeper ballistic missiles built prior to 1990. The U.S. Air Force maintains a surplus of them in Utah, where they can be shipped out for assembly in short notice. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Shout out to my eccentric members and patrons whose support keeps these videos coming. If you'd like to contribute and receive more SpaceX news in your week, check out the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX photographers. Until we meet again, have a nominal weekend. Godspeed. <laughs>